of recording. Uh, and this is just so that we can go back and, and make sure we have a record of any of the questions that are answered. But really for formal comments, you'll wanna do that uh, a few ways and we'll go through that at the very end. Um, but, but like I said, this is intended to be an informational session to help you understand some of the proposals here tonight, understand uh, what we're doing, where we're going, uh, and make sure that you all are able to provide your input on this process. Um, so I'm going to do a quick little introduction of our staff who are on this Zoom tonight. Uh, the joys of Zoom is that we're all able to do this from the comforts of our home or our office. But the downside is that if you, uh, you're at the mercy of uh, internet connectivity, and one of our staff members, actually kind of the key one, Jesse Coltrane, is having some internet issues. So she's going to try to run through the presentation, but if she has any issues, she's got the rest of us to fill in as the backup quarterbacks here. So uh, I'm going to run through and introduce some folks. If you guys could say, hey, and turn on your cameras, looks like you have. So Dave, you want to go first? Yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm Dave Landstrom. I'm the Regional Parks and Recreation Manager uh, for Region 1. Thanks, Dave. Neil. Neil, you're muted. Thanks everybody for joining. I'm Neil Anderson. I'm the Wildlife Program Manager for Region 1 and oversee uh, general management of the islands uh, that we're talking about tonight. Thank you, Neil. How about Amy? Hi, everybody. I'm Amy Grout. I'm the park manager for Flathead Lake State Park. Thanks, Amy. And Jesse, give it a try. Oop, you're still muted. I was so worried about getting my video on. Um, I'm Jesse Coltrane. I'm the wild um, out of Kalispell. I oversee the island management. I have to punt off to Dave if you guys, um, if I get really uh, choppy. Okay, great. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, we'll see how, how it goes. Um, and if anybody else, you know, I guess if anybody hasn't done one of these Zoom webinars before. It's, it's a little different than possibly other Zooms you've been involved with. You are muted, so we can't hear you out there, um, but I can see the list of you. And when we get to the question and answer period, I'll ask you to raise your hand. There's a little uh, icon at the bottom that says raise hand. You can click that and that will let me know that you have a question and then I can unmute you and allow you to talk. Uh, another really uh, great way to just get your question out there, especially if it's during the presentation and you don't want to forget it, you'll see that Q&A uh, icon down there. Click that Q&A thing and you can type in your question right there and that'll come to all of us. And then we will audibly answer any questions you have to the group. So if you have a question, you don't want to wait till the end to ask it or uh, you don't want to forget it, just type it into that Q&A and we'll be able to uh, get to it. So um, I think that's all the housekeeping items for this. Um, just appreciate everybody being here tonight. And without further ado, um, I'm going to hand this off to Jesse. And everybody should be able to see that. Okay, go ahead, Jesse. All right. Okay, Dylan. Yep, uh, try talking. And if this right off the bat isn't working, we're not going to fumble through it. And we'll just. Audible, okay, so. can, can you hear me? Yep, there you go. Okay, all right. Um, thanks for coming tonight, you guys. We actually have a pretty good turnout, it looks like. Um, wanted to go over a little bit of the history of the wildlife habitat islands in Flathead Lake. Um, these islands, which include Goose and Douglas Island, Cedar Island, Wild Horse Island, and Bird Island, were purchased with Pittman Roberts. Pittman and Robinson funds to protect Canada goose nesting habitat, and they were created to be uh, WHPAs, Wildlife Habitat Protection Islands. Um, back in 2009, a management plan was developed and approved, um, and a little of the management has been on Douglas, Goose, Cedar, and Bird Islands, whereas Wild Horse Island is managed as a state park and a lot, um, and so that's the recreation there and the habitat is um, through state parks. Um, in, since 2009 and prior to 2009 even, um, the unregulated recre 
use on the other islands has led to quite a few issues. Um, there's a huge human waste and garbage, as well as habitat and vegetation destruction and illegal camp resulting in larger fires. Dylan, can you do the next yep. slide? Oh, yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Uh, and this is just in there, Jesse. I pulled some of our recent stories that we've had talking about increased use and some of the issues we've yes. had there. Recently, we would had a a a, 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 a fire and um, which we from an uh, our illegal campfire that essentially burned most of the vegetation on Bird Island. Um, but increased. Uh, visitation throughout the Flathead region, and that includes all of these islands. So we've um, to in hopes to better manage visitor impacts um, because the island, the intent to the purchase of the island was to preserve wildlife habitat. We would like to um, with unregulated uh, camping. Uh, we do have some visitor conflict, so we'd like to reduce those. And then um, the impacts from visitors, as I mentioned before, is a huge problem on all of these islands. What we'd like to do is, is have information on the islands that would um, be informative on why the islands were purchased, what their value is, what their history is, and what the right so those were the kind of the goals of these proposed actions. Okay, Dylan, next slide. Dylan, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so specifically proposing on Cedar Island to establish up to seven campsites. This would include tent pads and um, campsites would be limited to up to six users per site. And there would be 14 days at each one of these sites within a 30 day period. Uh, we would install a composting toilet. And, and from the map on the right, you can see where we're proposing the campsites. So those are the little tent shaped icons. And then in the kind of in the center of the island, um, a little uh, people sign, and that would be where the proposed composting toilet would also establish the goal to essentially connect the campsites to the composting toilet. Um, and we would install informational kiosks and signs around the island, like I said, providing historic information on the island, the value of the islands, as well as regulatory signs. So people are clear about what the regulations of what you can do and what you can't do recreational life. Um, we would also prohibit campfires and then um, establish pack in, pack out regulations. So basically if you're not using the composting toilet, the regulation would be you need to remove it from the island, um, any human waste. And, that, and then Dylan, next slide. And then Bird Island, similar. Um, Bird Island is a small. In addition, um, we would prohibit the use on Bird Island, um, all recreational use during waterfowl nesting season, which is March 1st to July 15th. So there would be no recreation on the island during that time frame. Four campsites, it's a smaller island. Um, we want to give it a more remote feel uh, with tent pads. Again, limiting each site to six users per site, restricting it more than 14 days within a 30 day period, and then install a composting toilet. And that would be on the north end of the island there. Um, or I think that I, sorry, I think the island is turned, turned, uh, yeah, yeah, it'd be the south end of the island. Sorry, I was like, the island looked upside down to me. Um, 
strict, um, you know, human waste use, of course, would be pack in, pack out if you didn't use the composting toilet. Um, in addition, due to the recent fire on Bird Island, we need to develop a hazard tree removal plan for the island. There are lots of hazard trees on the island to date. And then again, a limited trail system, which would be limited to the south end of the island um, to get campsites to the composting toilet. Um, and then as with Cedar, we would install informative kiosks and signs informing people about the islands themselves as well as regulations for recreational use. Um, and then as well. Next slide, please. Sorry, Goose and Douglas Islands are, are very, um, and they have um, a, a surprising amount of nesting on those islands. There's a lot of good habitat, pretty much the entire islands, um, every spot is used by goose nesting typically. So we would prohibit the use during 15th, and then these islands would be open for So we're no losing you, overnight. Jesse. I don't know if you could repeat that. We're losing this one. Can't hear you. Can you? Nope. We might. Did we lose you? I can hear you guys. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. You're okay. There. If it keeps <laughs> getting right. worse, I mean, we're um, down to just a few more slides. So. Okay. So um, this would be day use only outside of nesting season. So no overnight stays on Douglas and Goose Islands. And then we would prohibit campfires and again, install informational kiosks. Next slide. All right, so that pretty much wraps up my presentation and the proposed actions for the improved recreational management for the WHPAs. Um, as Dylan mentioned before, you know, there's, there's more information, the actual EA, online the website comment period goes through five o'clock on november 22nd and then this isn't a for accepting public comments this is a question and answer period um, but if you want to send comments you can do them via the public notice page you can send emails directly to me or um or you can um send us an actual letter. Great, thanks, Jesse. And I'm gonna really quickly run folks on our website how to find this, just so that everybody can see very simply how to go and find this. So um, if you're gonna go to our Fish, Wildlife and Parks website, here's our homepage right here. Uh, on our homepage, up at the very top here, you'll see news and public notices public notices, and then right here in the center is public notices, click on that, scroll down, and right now it is that one right there. So you can see draft environmental assessment, Flathead Lake Islands proposed recreation management. Click on that, and really everything you need is right here on this page. We've got the draft environmental assessment is right here with all these details, uh, the press release that went out, uh, the 2009 Flathead, Lakes Island, Flathead Lake Islands management plan that, do, that was developed through a pretty lengthy public process uh, you know, over a decade ago. And so really interesting document there. Um, but then here's how you can comment. So you can even fill it in right here on our website or by mail and email. So just wanted to show folks this uh, since we have a new website to make sure you know how to find things up here. Public notices right here, scroll down. There we go. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the quick, quick, but covered every the main points here. Uh, so now is really an opportunity for folks to ask questions. I'm going to put up that last slide so folks remember where to find everything. Um, but we've already got a couple questions in the Q&A, which is great. So I'm going to read through these questions that come in through the Q&A. And then also, if you have a question, please go ahead and raise your hand and I will unmute you and you can ask your question to staff here. Um, that's what everybody's here for tonight is to answer questions. So please don't be shy. Um, I'm just going to quickly share this one. So this is just kind of hanging out here. Um, but the first question is from Brian. And Brian asks, does FWP have any ownership of the small island west of Cedar Island? I believe it is called Rock Island next to Shelter Island. Dave or Neil or Jesse, would you be able to answer that one? 
We do not. I mean, no, we, we well, does not either. So, no. Okay, so that that island is not publicly owned by FWP. Okay. Uh, and then Monica asks, why will only two two of the campsites on Bird Island have access to the composting toilet? Jesse, would you like me to take that one? We yeah. might have lost Jesse, so yeah, go yeah, ahead. Dave, I can answer that because uh, and Amy route as well. Uh, um, we did a site tour to uh, locate um, the, the ideal locations for camp. Uh, camping sites on both Cedar and Bird and um, on Bird Island. <clears throat> we tried to use sites that were well suited and that people have been historically using. And if anyone's been on Bird Island since uh, since the uh, fire, you'll see that getting from those northern campsites to the, the, the location of the composting toilet is extremely difficult due to dead uh, downfall and, and um, you know, standing dead, it's very, very thick, very impenetrable. There's also not a good location to the north for the composting toilet, and there's actually an ideal location on the south end. So the feeling there is that, um, you know, we'll be able to service at least the southernmost campsites. And, it, and actually, it's not that far of a paddle if you wanted to paddle down the shore, pull in and use the composting restroom. Uh, but it's just a logistics thing and a terrain Thing. Uh, we're able to centrally locate it in Cedar Island, which then makes it accessible to everyone. But birds a different, uh, a whole different setting. Thanks, Dave. Thank you for the question, Monica. Great question. Uh, looks like Bruce has his hand up. So Bruce, I'm going to allow you to talk if you just unmute yourself and go ahead. So Bruce, go ahead. It looks like you can talk. You just have to unmute yourself. Okay, sorry about that. There you go. So yeah, quick question. So what about day use? So let's just say all the sites are full. Uh, is there any other restrictions concerning uh, people uh, mooring their boat, you know, off the island and, and using the island for, for day use? What, what kind of limitations will there be there? Yeah, great question. Who wants to tackle yeah. that one? Sure, I, I can handle that. So Bruce, yeah, the, the only restrictions are gonna be during that nesting period, March 1 through July 15. Mm -hmm. The islands are open for recreational use and that we picked that time period to, uh, to offset any concerns we might have for nesting, uh, nesting waterfowl. Okay. Um, yeah, the day use will be prohibited on the rest of the islands. It's just camping sites that will be restricted to those, those specific sites. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Great, didn't that answer your question, Bruce? Yeah, yeah. Great. Well, I'm going to mute you, but if you uh, and lower your hand, and then if you have another question, just feel free to raise that hand again. Okay. Uh, we got a question from Brian. Uh, would it be first come, first served, or would a reservation system be set up? Maybe reservation for some of the sites for camping. At this stage in the game, it's first come, first served. Um, I think the EA mentions that we can explore a reservation system down the road. And um, I, I should probably have let Amy do this because answer this one because Amy is deals a lot with campsite reservations, but um, uh, we're not yet prepared uh, I, both contractually and with staffing to operate a reservation system on those islands yet. So in, in the initial uh, phases, we would it would just be first come first serve. Thanks for the question, Brian. Not seeing any other questions, but we'll we'll hold here for a little bit in case anything comes to mind, and or if we need to go back to a uh, one of the slides that um, if Jesse cut out and you couldn't understand her, or if you have any clarifications you need, please uh, please let us know. That's why we're here tonight. Uh, Anne, so Anne's got her hand up. Awesome, Anne. Uh, okay, I'm going to allow you to talk, and if you just unmute yourself, go right ahead. My question was on the phrase. A committee of stakeholders uh, helped put this together. There was no mention of who those stakeholders were. Yeah, thanks. That's a good question. Um, see, I, I can pull it up, but it, I don't know if Neil or Dave or if you guys can go through. It was a pretty broad uh, arrangement of folks, if I remember correctly.
I, I'd like to know, like yeah. to know what it was. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. I don't, it doesn't look like Dave or Neil is chiming in. So I, I will. I, hi, Ann. No, I was just grabbing my copy. So I think what we're referring to is the 2009 Flathead Lake Islands Management Plan. Is that is that the reference that we're asking about? Ann? My reference is, uh, you said a committee of stakeholders yes. helped form this plan. That's correct. So the original plan that was done in 2009 included uh, Lester Big Crane from uh, Confederated Session Kootenai Tribes, Bobby Gilmore, who was then at that time running Glacier Sea Kayaking uh, and was also part of Flathead Paddlers, Laney Handel from Flathead Lakers. Um, there was a representative from the Wild Horse Island Homeowners Association. Uh, there was a, a county commissioner from Lake County at the time. There was a member of the Polson Chamber and the Glacier Country Tourism Commission, uh, a member from Flathead Chapter of Audubon uh, and Flathead Wildlife, um, Bill Myers from Pointer Scenic Cruises and Greg Ponson from the Department of Natural Resources and Conservation. So at the time, those were the uh, committee members and then department included folks from, um, uh, from both the parks and the wildlife divisions, as well as uh, assistance from our planning office. Oh, there it is, right there. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I appreciate it. I'm so that. busy That's reading. Well put, it, put together. If I, I have dropped off a request and I emailed the same request in, if uh, I would like to be part of the... Uh, planning committee or Bobby Gilmore uh, has is no longer in Flathead Paddlers or Glacier Sea Kayaking and either I or some member of this fairly large group of paddlers would love to be included on the uh, in the committee to help help you with your plans. Well and I'll t I can address that I think you know we're not the the management plan is this this action this proposal is is uh, fruit of that management plan, if you will. So um, we had actually hoped to implement this much earlier in the game, but the stars have aligned that we're able to do it now. But as we go forward, um, you know, if there's an opportunity to, um, you know, to utilize your interest and expertise, and I know you've spent a lot of time on the lake, um, in particular in the paddling world, um, we would absolutely take you up on that. I appreciate that. And one more question that I was asking was, um, I don't fully understand this and I have probably make jumping to some assumptions, but decades ago when we noticed that the uh, bird island was, put it politely, be shat with human excrement, we as a organization offered to uh, see if we could help you with put, putting on some kind of an outhouse there. Instead, you were in the middle of doing a um, outhouse on Cedar Island, and uh, we did help you go out and put that together. But it's my understanding that the compost toilet that you accepted as a gift or a trade from another agency came somewhat something like that was not ever workable. You had offered us then the opportunity to, to uh, volunteer to uh, stir or clean or whatever the unit, but, um, and, and you kindly offered us hepatitis shots. <laughs> but, uh, we, th we thought it was just a doomed uh, thing. And it, I, I don't think I've ever seen the thing completed or in operation since. Uh, it's just a pile of mess right now. So what I was going to suggest if I were to be in any help, I've been to outhouses. I'm not an outhouse expert, but I've been to fine outhouses all over uh, on islands and in the Pacific and uh, Vancouver Island. And uh, I think what we have on Wild Horse Island is the best thing I've ever seen in my life, but I doubt you can afford that, but I would hope you would use some care uh, in getting a very good quality outhouses or whatever you're gonna put in for uh, sanitary purposes. And that's what we would like to help uh, you with. Well, and I have some good news for you. Good. It is that um, there is funding for this project that was allocated in the last legislative session and Amy Grout, who is- Yes, I know. More familiar with that latrine on Wild Horse Island than she'd like to be. 
um, is working with the same contractor who installed that one to try and see if we can get that same person to install these next two. That is really, really good news. I know it's a basic, disgusting thing, but my goodness, it's important. Yeah. To not to, Before you step onto the island and either those islands and step in, particularly bird, and it, it's just nasty. So anyway, thank you very much for answering my questions. Mm -hmm. And my love to uh, Amy Grout. She's a wonderful <laughs> resource manager. Yes, thank she you. is. We think we're going to keep her around and try to clone her. I hope you do. Yeah. <laughs> thank well, you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for the questions, Ann. Uh, that's exactly why we're here tonight. So um, I'm going to lower your hand, but if anything else comes to mind, go ahead and raise your hand. Um, any other questions out there? Uh, feel free to type it into the Q&A or raise your hand. Dylan, I'll, I'll add to that the same thing we've done in the past with these is if if any of you who are watching tonight think of questions later, um, you're sure welcome to contact us here. You know, Dylan, you can start, you can track Dylan down and he can find any of us. So um, don't feel like this is your only opportunity to ask a question. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the reminder, Dave. Yeah, please give us a call um, here at our office and I can connect you with Jesse or Dave or Neil or Amy. Um, but, um, oh, here we've got another question. Okay, great. This one's from Kate. Uh, I had a question about enforcement. What will that look like? More specifically, we've heard of issues with folks in the evenings on or moored off the islands, not really a day or overnight issue. Yeah, that's a good question, Kate. Uh, who would like to address the, the enforcement aspect of these islands? Well, I guess I can take a shot at it. So we do have some wardens who routinely go out there and um, monitor activities on Flathead Lake and not just at the islands, but for other things. And so enforcement will happen with our, with our existing staff. And obviously if we, if this should go through, we'll have a little bit more presence from folks going there to maintain campsites and the latrine and those type of things. So, so I think our biggest problem there, you know, mooring off the, off the island isn't really something that's illegal. Um, as long as they're not on there uh, camping illegally or, or using fires. So I think uh, enforcement is, is going to be always going to be a challenge in these situations, especially on an island, but I think we're going to have a lot more presence out here uh, if this goes through than what we've had in the past. Yeah, thank you, Neil. Anyone else, anything to add? That's a good question, Kate. Thanks for asking it. Um, and, and Dave or Amy, remind me, uh, day use is technically that's uh, dusk to dawn, right? Or dawn to dusk? Is that the hours technically? Um, yeah, you know, it's defined more specifically in the arm rolls, but we tend to, um, just for the sake of visitor convenience, we tend to follow, you know, um, dawn till dusk. So dark till dark, Yeah, uh, essentially day use. Great. All good questions. Any any other questions out there, points of clarification we can help with? Bruce, see your hand up and look, you can dress, unmute yourself. So go ahead, Bruce. <laughs> I just want to thank you guys. I think uh, you're absolutely heading in the right direction of what needs to happen. That's it. Okay, great. Well, thanks. Yep. Please provide that comment if that's how you feel, Bruce. And, you know, sometimes, and I have to remind folks this, of, you know, when we go out for public comment on projects, uh, you know, maybe by the nature or the design of the process, you usually only hear from the folks who are not happy or, or critical. And the folks, even if it's a majority, we don't hear from. So if, please, uh, if you can take a couple minutes and let us know yay or nay on, uh, well, yeah, it's not a vote, but any, any positive comments like that are appreciated. Thanks, Bruce. You got it. All right. Any other 
questions out there. I'll kind of hold us here for a, another couple minutes just to see if anything comes in. Otherwise, I won't hold up everybody's dinner plans any longer. Well, I think I'm going to start wrapping up here just by reminding folks about a uh, deadline to comment. But if, if something comes up here at the last second, please don't hesitate to raise your hand or write it in the Q&A. But we really appreciate everybody logging in tonight, engaging in this process, uh, providing feedback on these proposals. Um, that's really critical to come into a good, good decision and good management is with input from folks, especially uh, like those here who are really familiar with these islands and Flathead Lake. So um deadline to comment is 5 p.m november 22nd you can do that through the web portal there that i showed you on the public notices page you can email your comment to jesse coltrane there at that email address uh, or you can write us uh write a letter uh with your input as well if you have any questions after the day because we still got a couple weeks here till comment period closes if you have questions or you you need reminder on anything don't hesitate to reach out to us here. Call You can call me at the uh, FWP Region 1 office. Just call the front desk and they'll connect you with me. And I can track down anybody uh, who can help answer any of your questions there. Um, thanks again, uh, everybody, for being here tonight. Thanks to staff for being here and Jesse for the presentation. And barring any last second questions, I am going to close this meeting and hope everybody has a great night. Great rest of the week. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks for attending, everybody.